and I'm a PhD student in social entrepreneurship. And when I caught interest in social entrepreneurship, I had people saying things like, oh yeah, social enterprises, you mean like Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, yeah, great, social media is a really, really great topic. Yes, I do research on enterprises, but these enterprises are not specialized in social media. Instead, social enterprises are specialized in innovating our society. And yeah, however, we have difficulties uh, apparently to understand who social entrepreneurs are and what they do. And that's a problem. Because if we cannot understand who they are and which challenges they face, we cannot support their role in society. And that's a problem. Because the success of social entrepreneurs is our success. Because they innovate our society and we need innovation in our society. So we need to attract people to become social entrepreneurs and we need to learn how we can make social entrepreneurs successful. But how can we do so if we do not know who we are talking about? So that's why I'm here. I'm here to shed light on our understanding of social entrepreneurs. And I realized in the last couple of years that I have difficulties to convince that social entrepreneurs are very, very important. And I realized that I always did the same mistake. I cannot say or convince anyone that social entrepreneurs are very important if I don't explain who they are. So my first task today is to explain who social entrepreneurs are. And second, I will reveal which special challenges social entrepreneurs face. And thirdly, I will explain how we can unlock the potential of social entrepreneurs. And why is all of this important? Because we need change in our society and we need people to work for us. So I brought two stories for you. Let me introduce to you Tim and Tom. They both started a company that produces bikes. And Tim is an entrepreneur and Tom is a social entrepreneur. So let's see what Tim is doing. Well, Tim has always been very excited about cycling. When he was three years old, he learned to ride a bike. And then he had many, many bicycle races in his early childhood. And he wanted to get better in cycling. So he started to produce those bikes on his own. And then he started his studies in electrical engineering and realized it would be very interesting to combine batteries and bicycles and he started to innovate those bikes, so make the batteries better for the use in bikes. And then there were people saying, oh yeah, effortless, effortless bike riding, that would be nice because I don't like sweating. So he said, okay, I'm gonna start a company. And this is the model of his company. He's producing bikes and then give these to customers who pay him for those bikes. And that's the business. And then he realized, okay, that's working quite nice. And he employed people with great mechanical skills to make his bikes better so that he could get more customers. And today he has 40 employees and sells in six countries. And Tim is very happy because he can earn money with what he always wanted to earn money with, which is contracting bikes. So let's see what his colleague Tom is doing. Tom grew up in an area where there were just few people who had a bike. He instead played soccer with his friends. And the kids in his area, they had to walk several kilometers to go to school. And in school, the, teacher, the teachers only had a vault and chalk, there were no books. And Tom was very interested in learning. And he was lucky because he received a scholarship, so he could go studying in a big city in his country. And then he did his bachelor's degree in psychology and his master's degree in business administration. And then he was ready to work. And like his fellow students, he had to consider to go abroad because there were no jobs in his country. But he did not want to go abroad. He wanted to contribute something in his hometown. So he thought, well, I want to really use my abilities to change something in my community. And he went back to his hometown, although there were no jobs at all. And then he started to transmit skills to young people in his area that graduated senior high school and that couldn't find a job. 
And then he thought, well, that can't be it. Well, there must be more. And then he hit into the idea of producing bikes from bamboo. And he thought, well, that would be very interesting because there's bamboo all around, so we could use it. And then they started to produce those bikes. And then he realized these bikes weren't much commercialized yet. So he thought, well, let's just sell these bikes to customers so we can earn money. And then he employed these senior graduates and set up a company. <coughs> and in all this time, his focus was on the community. And he's still focusing on employing those people and transmitting skills to those people in this area. And he's very happy. He has now 40 employees and sells his um, products in six countries, Germany included. And now he can work for what he always wanted to work for, the bettering of his community. I met Tom almost two years ago, and his real name is Kwabena Danso, and he's the founder of Bumas International. I was in Ghana because I'm part of a project that's supporting um, entrepreneurs in Ghana. And we were very curious how Kwabena managed to set up a social business in such very unlikely circumstances. So it took us two hours to go um, to visit Bumis International on sandy and bumpy roads from the next big city. And that's what we saw. On the left you see the storage of the raw material, which is the bamboo, that uh, the company buys from the farmers in the area. And then you see um, the production, where you see the young people working there, producing those bike frames. And then that's me. I'm quite amazed about the product because I like cycling. And just next to it, there's the accountant's office. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we were quite amazed seeing all these things. And then a year later, we decided to go back again because we had new students on board and we wanted to show them what we saw. And then, again, we were very surprised because, remember the accountant's office before? Here you see the very same room a year later, and it had to be used as a storage room because Kwabena received such a great amount of orders that he had to transfer them into this room. And then it also, the production side had to be moved outside and expanded there because he had those great amount of orders. And it was really amazing to see this progress because the more bikes were sold, the more people could get an employment and the more children could receive good education. Because Kwabena did not only support um, the local um, people to employ them, but he also had several projects, for example, a project where he gave out um, those bikes to students so that they can ride the bike to school. And yeah, and now he explained us as well that he is um, producing bike frames for electrical bikes, which seems quite interesting. So he's expanding also his product range. These were two model stories that illustrate what social entrepreneurs and what entrepreneurs do and how they work. And over the last three years, I met many Tims and Toms, and I'm convinced that they both have a very, very important job. The Tims in our world are there to innovate technology, and the Toms in our world are there to innovate society. None is better than the other. We really need both for our lives and for our future. However, I made a very important observation. Our system is rather meant to produce Tims than Toms, to produce entrepreneurs rather than social entrepreneurs. My first job in university was to support courses that were there to explain who Tims are, what Tims do, and how students could learn how to build up something like Tim. And then I asked myself in a university of 20,000 students, Oh, we have great support for Tims, for entrepreneurs to come to life, but what about the Toms? Don't we need to explain students who Toms are, what they do, and how they could build something like Tom? So I set out to develop a concept, a quiet money, and important partners to offer the first program at our university to explain to all students from all disciplines um, what Toms do, who they are, and how they could become a Tom. But I think that's not enough. I can't stop here, and I think we can't stop here. 
Because there was a time that I worked with social entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, and especially social entrepreneurs face three very important hurdles. And the first one is that entrepreneurs struggle between two different groups with very different interests. The one group is the community. Social entrepreneurs would like to solve a problem in the community. And the other part is the customer. They need to solve a problem for the customer, otherwise the customer will not pay. So to make this connection and find a match is the very core and very, very challenging task of social entrepreneurs. And the second is that social entrepreneurs focus in their business on bettering the community, and that's very unusual. For banks and investors, it's a very unusual approach, and their metrics are not meant to fit this approach, because the profit that social entrepreneurs make is different from entrepreneurs. So it's very, very difficult for social entrepreneurs to get money to start their business, and as well to grow the business. And the third one is that I realized that there are many people who do not consider to become a social entrepreneur because they do not know that Tom's exist. And also I discovered that there are people who have a Tom inside, so they have the potential to become social entrepreneurs, but we do not educate them. And that's a mistake. Because if we do not educate those people's, people who are talents to change our society, then we waste the potential to change our society for the better. And how do we tackle those problems? First, we need to widen the spotlight of our support, because we need to support both entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs. And second, if you feel like Tom, if you feel like having a Tom inside, you need to learn how to be like Tom, and how to create something like Tom, how to become a social entrepreneur. So promote Tom's, become a Tom, and innovate society. Thank you.